Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode of Mike Adelic. I'm Mike Brancatelli. You're you. And today's guest is Ed Lou. Oh, shit. That rhymed. And I'm a fucking genius. So, um, actually, a pretty good freestyle rapper. If anybody wants to go toe to toe with this mofo, one day I'm a show you for show that I ain't no ho. That I'm just a micadelic entrepreneur trying to get a little cheddar so I can get out the dough and buy. <laughs> I'm like Jay Z. I'm like Jay Z. Do you understand? One take. I don't. I don't write it down. It just comes from my mind. I mean, come on. Where have you ever heard such such lyrical genius before? All right, I got to stop before before I lose subscribers. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, yeah, I got a show with Ed Lou today of Psychedelic Milk, and um, I was gonna put this episode out with a. We were supposed to do this is like part one. We're doing a part two, um, but I held the episode. Ed released it on his end. I held it because I wanted to put out one two together. Uh, but uh, anyway, sorry Ed for doing that. I always I love talking with Ed. Love talking with Ed. I hope you guys enjoy listening to the conversations with Ed, with Ed uh, from Psychedelic Milk as well. Um, yeah, we we talk a little bit in here about my journey coming back from Peru. Uh, back into the States. I'm going to do a solo episode on that. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to give you guys like a full in-depth, you know, access to in the inside of my brain and guts and, and mucus. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I enjoyed talking with Ed. We kind of, I think we talked a little bit about, not like a little bit, but I think like the focus sort of shifted into, into social media. Um, and, and so we talked about some stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I just, I, again, like love, love talking to Ed, great guy. And this is part one. There's going to be a part two to this show. Uh, shout out of course to everybody who supports the show on Apple podcasts, who supports the show on Patreon. Uh, actually, as I'm recording this intro, I just got an email, uh, from Patreon saying that I have a new patron, Tim Brown, former receiver from the Oakland Raiders, Tim Brown, you were great with Jerry Rice in that Super Bowl run. Now, uh, Tim Brown, thank you, Tim Brown, uh, for being the newest Patreon member. I'm sure there's some other people, but this just popped up as I, I was recording. So there's your shout out, Tim. Thank you so much. Seriously, thank you to everybody <clears throat> who uh, who does that. It's uh, it's awesome. It's just uh, it's great to see a little like community of people uh, forming in the, around the show. And then, so when you're a member of the Patreon, uh, when you're a Patreon supporter, you become a member of the Mike Delic inner sanctum WhatsApp chat group, which is awesome, which I love. It's just like a cool community of people all over the world sharing really cool articles and practices and stories and trip reports. And it's, it's great. So if you want to go even deeper, into, you know, 24-7 access into the Mikeadelic world, into the inner sanctum, become a Patreon member and you get access to that. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I'm definitely going to go into, I'm doing a solo show and I'm going to go into detail about just a lot of things that are going on, um, and, and my journey back home and everything. Um, one thing that is new is that we have two sponsors for the show now. Um, the first one uh, I just started promoting, it's hempbombs.com. I just released an episode with Josh from Hemp Bombs. Uh, Josh reached out to me, sent me an email, wanted me to promote Hemp Bombs on the show. I said, let me try it, you know, because I want to make sure that it's in, you know, it works. It's in alignment with what I believe in. And, you know, it's actually effective. I get sent things all the time uh, that I turn down or turn away or just don't really feel anything from or don't have any positive experiences from. So I'm happy to say that Hemp Bombs is doing the old trickaroo on this psychedelic dude over here, me. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm really happy about this. Really, really happy about this. It's uh, it's really I've 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 had noticeable improvements in my mood, in my sleep. Um, it's really it's really real. 
That's, that's all I could say. I mean, really it, it works. It works for me. Um, and it, it, for me, it's really helped me just get to sleep, go to sleep, um, at night and wake up refreshed and, and really in a better mood throughout the day, in a consistent, steady mood throughout the day, every day. And I think, I really think it's because it's alleviating a little pain. It's alleviating a little anxiety for me. And it's really helping me like go to, which is huge for me because I used to be such an insomniac madman night owl that, that I've, I've been falling asleep before midnight, which is like, this is a record for me. I've never done this before. If I, if I'm in bed at like 11, 1130, I'm tossing, I'm turning, I'm, I'm watching stuff on Netflix. I'm scrolling around on my phone. I'm just like thinking about all kinds of stuff. And no matter what I've done, breathing practices, you know, meditation, this sort of thing, exercise, I still like my mind is just so fucking crazy that it just doesn't work. So, I mean, you know, and that's why I've always been a fan of like consuming things like psychedelics and, you know, where Terrence McKenna says, like, you don't need to like believe in anything and you don't need to like face the West and, you know, get shuffled around by beady eyed little men. And, you know, it's just, you just take it and it works. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I'm really happy to, I'm really happy to be endorsing and promoting a product that actually fucking does what it says it's going to do. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it. I mean, so it works for, it works for me and I love it. And as long as it keeps doing that, I'm going to keep talking about it. Uh, and if, if you guys want to check them out give them a try, give them, give them a whirl, give them a spin, whatever you want to give them, go to hempbombs.com and put in the code Mike 15 to get 15% off your entire order. And they got great stuff. They got gummies, they got oil tinctures. So check it out. CBD from Hemp Bombs has improved my life thus far. And uh, really uh, grateful for for them, for making such an awesome product that actually works and for uh, being on the show, being, you know, being a sponsor of the show. So thank you. And um, yeah, and without further ado, let's get into the conversation with Ed because it's a good one. So this is part one. There's going to be a part two coming out. I'm going to be recording that solo cast. Um, You know, many thanks, many blessings uh, to all of you who reach out and, and, and take the time out of your day to write something nice about the show, to leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts, to take those Federal Reserve notes that are burning holes in your pocket and throw them our way. And, uh, and, and, and throw your support behind this, this mission here, this mission to, you know, just like share and, and, and educate and learn and grow and, uh, and, and really just embark on trying to create a little bit of change in the world, make the world a little bit more of a a better place, a little more fun, a little bit more enjoyable and, uh, with a little less suffering. And so, uh, thanks, thanks to everybody for, for joining on and, and, and doing this, we're doing it together. So I, I appreciate that and reach out to me on Facebook and reach out to me on Instagram and however you want to reach out to me, reach out to me, uh, on my, um, website at mikebrank.com. I love talking with you guys. I love, uh, engaging. I, I, I love hearing from you. You're never, you're never bothering me. It's never an annoyance. I, I, you know, you're my tribe, you're my community, you know, we we have found the others here, and we're and we're engaging in something that we all share and we like, and uh, and so um, you know, I just happen to be the host of the show, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, this is a, a real community effort, uh, and this is a real community here, and I and I really love you all who who listen to this show and who get value from it. And I respect your opinions and stuff. So please message me. Tell me your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just say hi. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I love it all. So good things are going on in my life and uh, excited to release the next couple podcasts. we got some good guests lined up and uh, going to do part two of this, like I said. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. Psychedelics are illegal, not because... A loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third-story window, 
psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open to us the possibility that everything we know is wrong. We don't need new laws that control our consciousness and rigidly place it in a prison. Cognitive liberty. The fact that as adults, if we're not hurting anybody else, we should have the right to explore the contours of our own consciousness without any mediation or legislation on the part of somebody else. Reject the authority. Authority is a lie. Or is it perception? Information is power. But we have to seize, seize the opportunity. The opportunity. The opportunity. Begin. All right, Mike. It's been a while. Ed, it has been a while, my friend. Good to be back. The last time I talked to you, I think you were going back and forth to Peru and back in New York, but now you're back permanently to the states, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, how was your trip to Peru? I mean, it was like a what a half a year that that you're away from. The states. Yeah, so I, I left in January, um, and then I came back. I think like in the beginning of May or April, and uh, end of April, beginning of May. I think beginning of May I came back, and uh, and basically I was waiting to get uh, like a full time job down at the ayahuasca center that I was at, and go back there. They I think they wanted me to stay. Um, you know when my time when my first like term was up i was gonna stay but uh but then you know some things changed and i was like all right yeah i'll just go home you know sort of integrate back into society and and uh talk about this offer you know have we'll have a skype call or something and then so they offered for me to come back i wound up going back uh in the beginning of august or actually, yeah, beginning they of August. They wanted you to do the podcast or something like that, right? They, they were, yeah, they were talking about doing that, but it's things that things that sort of like morphed and changed into um, into other areas that I didn't really feel were in like in my wheelhouse, like videography and some other things like that. Like, I'm a pretty good, I'm a pretty good editor, and I know how to work like Photoshop and stuff, but. As far as working cameras, like I'm not, I don't know how to yeah. do that. So I'm not a camera person. I don't really know how to do any like videography work. They wanted me to do some like video testimonial stuff. And, um, you know, I kind of was like, yeah, I could, you know, I could help out with that. But uh, the podcast was really what I was interested in. And uh, yeah, things didn't really get moving in the way that I wanted them to get moving in. And uh, I had a couple ceremonies there and it quickly became clear that like, some other stuff had came up in my life and I was like, all right, I actually have to go back home. Like this isn't right for me. So I, I came back, I came back uh, in like the uh, second week of September. But I think in the beginning you were like really enjoying it because I mean, finally you were away from the city and you know, the civilization and all the <laughs> neuroses that you're around, you know, back in the States and then you know, you're surrounded by, you know, ayahuasca and the jungle. But then it sounded like towards the end, you kind of grew tired of it, right? Yeah, you know, basically, so what had happened for me was this, in short, and I can explain longer if you want, but just like to quickly answer this, this first question, it's like, I had been like always searching for like some, you know, more like in, in terms of like my whole life, I've always been searching for like something more, something deeper, something more true, something more real. And when I found psychedelics, I was like, great, like this is this is something that takes me into that next realm, like takes me into that place, that place that I've been like searching for. But it still wasn't enough. It's like I always was like reaching for this, this deeper transcendental esoteric mysterious you know magical thing that supersedes all of all of uh you know like this tangible material reality you know that i kind of get 
tired of, you know, this mundane sort of, you know, everyday reality. I'm like, all right, there's something beyond that and I'm going to get in touch with that. Uh, but in my pursuit of doing that, I sort of had let all of these resp- like normal human responsibilities fall by the wayside, m- mainly like financial ones, you know, like ringing up credit cards and not paying them back, student loans and not paying them and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I still feel it, with this in regards to the student loan aspect, I still feel like a little... Uh, like like a, pr- a principled stance in in how I feel about that. Like, you know, the, it was like a predatory right. system and I didn't want to pay it back. But <laughs> the reality is, the reality is that like, you know, I have a, a girlfriend that I, that I love very much and like maybe we want to settle down, have a family or something like that, get a house or whatever. I got to kind of clean up this mess, right? So, so for me, I had abandoned all of that, like that stuff, that boring stuff, the stuff that I had considered like, you know, I don't know, square or whatever. And, um, and I've been like, you know, on this psychedelic journey for this something bigger. And when I went down a hero's journey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, yeah. The hero's like, journey does not include student loans. The, the hero's <laughs> journey doesn't include like paying bills every month, you know? Right. But it, it but then, it, but then again, it, it does like it kind of does. does. Right. It so does. it's, it's it was this, it. it was this yeah. super weird thing that happened to me where I, when I went back for the, for the fourth time or third time, I forget, like when I went back for that final time and I was ready to work there and be there for a long term period of time, I had this ceremony experience that was like, Hey Mike, like you're done with this. You know, you, we, we've taken you as far as we can go. Like you've seen a lot, you've experienced a lot, but really the work that you have to do, everybody talks about the work to be done with ayahuasca. Like you've worked on a lot of things. I've worked on a lot of things with like, you know, my, my depression and, you know, relationships and things like that, traumas, stuff like that. Now the re- the work that you have to do, this thing that you've been ignoring, the thing that's so simple to do is just sitting right in front of you. It's just like, Hey, clean up your mess, clean up this financial mess so you can move forward. And I was like, Oh shit. Like it, it, it struck me because it was like, so plain and so ordinary and it was so not psychedelic and it was it wasn't this grand mysterious thing it was just this really real thing and it was like oh okay that's what i have to do so makes sense i'm gonna go and do that then so i can take care of the past clean up that that negative karmic energy that i've been building up and clear the way for a future and so that's 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 what i'm doing that's why i that's where you know why i'm back isn't it weird that a lot of people think of psychedelic experiences are these things that, you know, empower you to love more, to be more in tune with the universe, to tap into the fifth dimension and all that jazz. But then like they neglect the everyday nuances of human life, which is like, you know, cleaning your room or, you know, brushing your teeth or regulating your health or paying your bills and things like that. But actually those are kind of the foundation and cornerstones of our everyday existence now, right? I mean, at least in the West, like we have to take care of those things. And you know, in the jungle, maybe it's different, but it's kind of the same idea, right? Like they have to, you know, hunt the animals to eat or, you know, they have to gather wood for winter, but it's the same like foundational idea that you got to take care of the sim- the simple basics before you ascend into the like the you know esoteric ladder into the fifth dimension and when we don't have those taken care of how can we ascend you know and i think a lot of people like these wooks hmm. want to ignore that you know like they think oh like we talk about the the bills and the credit card loans and stuff like that like those are all like like the the remnants of the capitalistic society like i'm not i'm not part of that system bro you know what i mean like like we want to be away from that and there's good reason to be away from that right like it's a trap most of the time and it's it's like this system that makes you keep going and keep participating in their system so that you can never leave it's like this ecosystem of financial death that they want you to participate in but it's actually not too hard to take care of. You know, if you pay all your bills, if you make a decent living or even like a 
a, just any living. You can afford the things that you get and you don't have to pile up these loans and these bills. And once you take care of those, you don't have to spend your time and energy and stress to worry about those things. And you can worry about other things that could take you to a different level. But a lot of people ignore those things. You know, people don't think it's part of the hero's journey. What I think is definitely a big part of it. Like you have to take care of the, the basics, like th that's your foundation. And then you can kind of, you know, move up the ladder, so to speak. But I think that's a really, that's a really cool message, dude, that you got from ayahuasca because, yeah, you know, people only get those like heroic things. Like, but I think those are kind of what people are seeking as well. You know, like people want to have those peak experiences, but they don't want to pay attention to, you know, hey, take care of your room, you know, take care of your car, like maybe get a fucking oil change. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Right. Like, yeah. 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 You, you hear that messages, stuff, but you, they ignore it. You know, like they yeah, exactly. They only pay attention to right. the grandiose stuff. Right. That was what I was doing. Like I, I, I had, yeah. I had decided to attach myself like to the archetype. Like I decided to attach myself, you know, to something that was in a realm beyond like the normal human everyday reality that, you know, 7 billion people on the planet experience. It's like, so I had, I had been having these like heroic, magical, uh, altered states of consciousness experiences. And I'm like, all right, well, clearly what I'm experiencing here is the truth. And this is in this go, this is, it's so much bigger than like, you know, making your bed in the morning, you know what I mean? Is it, making your bed in the morning doesn't mean anything compared to like the mysteries of the universe or whatever, you know? And you know, the, the thing with that is it's like, okay, well, you know, I just, I, I guess I just look at it and like, and I think a lot of people, you know, this is just a part of the journey. You know, it's a part of the process of if you're on, if you're on a spiritual path, you know, whatever that means. I mean, I, I, I would, I would argue that life is a spiritual path, you know, I mean, it's like, but if you're on this kind of like quote unquote spiritual path or psychedelic path or whatever, if you're seeking something, it's a continuous journey that evolves and you're going to be always, you're always going to be learning if you're open to it. You know, I think a lot of people like to plant their flag and like rest on the mountain and say like, well, I've made it, you know, but it's like, okay, well, there's, you know, there's a, then you have to, you have to descend now. You have to come down. Like once you've gone up, you got to come back down. Otherwise, if you hike the top of Mount Everest, you're going to freeze to death if you stay there, you know? So it, it's, it's just, I think it's a part of the journey and I don't think I would have understood it if I didn't go through the motions of living it and experiencing it. Cause now I have, not only do I have like an intelligent, uh, an intellectual understanding of it. Like I logically understand how this makes sense, but I also have like a deep emotional, uh, connection with the message too, you know? Um, yeah. so yeah. And, and it's like, just, uh, there's this Rick and Morty episode. Do you watch Rick and Morty? No. Oh, it's a great show, man. Everybody asked me that. I love it. It's I great. <laughs> and, uh, and there's this great episode and it's like, it's pretty, it's, it's deep for a cartoon. It's, um, but He's like, uh, he goes to this like therapist, the guy, Rick, uh, scientist, and she's like giving him this talk. And I remember it just, it always stuck out in my head because it resonated so much with me. And she was like saying that, you know, it's boring if you, you brush your teeth and like wipe your ass every day because, you know, it's like repairing and maintenance and cleaning and, and that stuff, it's not an adventure. You know, there's no way that you can like do it so wrong that you would die. It's just it's just maintenance. It's just work. And like the, the bottom line is that like some people are okay with doing that. And some people would rather die than doing that. And, and I was the kind of person that would rather die than having to like focus on mundane work, like repairing and, you know, maintaining myself. Like I was just like, well, that sucks. So I, I want to fucking, I want every day to be a fucking like magical, fantasy adventure i want to be fucking frodo in the lord of the rings or you know i want to i want to have so i want to be you know a hero in star wars like saving the galactic you know civilization or whatever like that's that to me and i think i was like doing that in my own in my own little way by sort of just you know all the things that i was involving myself in and and and, and was just like this is the adventure like this is what it's about and neglecting all this other stuff and you know, it's just at the end of the day, it comes back and it's like, you, there's got to be some balance here. 
And like, I really feel like in, in the, in the last, pa- uh, the past couple of months, I really feel like I've like matured a lot. Like I've actually, I actually feel like a, like an adult and you know, I probably should have felt like an adult like <laughs> a little while ago, but I actually feel like a responsible adult now. Meanwhile, all your listeners are like, he's sold out, bro. He's back in the system. He's working for the man now. And now he's back in the States and he's, he's not one of us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not saying No, that. but you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, uh, I think it's, it's, it's easy to find God or to find the magic in the peak experience because it's obvious. Like it's like the low hanging fruit. It's right there. You know, you take ayahuasca, of course you're going to see some crazy stuff. Of course you're going to experience your universal oneness. But I think the more skillful thing, and I don't know, I don't know if that's the right word to put it, but you know, the more, I guess skillful thing is to find that same experience in the mundane daily mm. stuff, right? Yeah. Like if you wash your dishes or you clean your room or if you get an oil change and then you still meet God, man, you're onto something, right? And then obviously like there are some people that have those experiences, like they see God everywhere. And I think like those people are like Ram Das, right? Or like really like close to enlightened people that, can find love and feel love in everything and everywhere that they go. Yeah. And that's like the really, really, I mean, that's the person that has spent a lot of time, you know, in those realms and can like bring that out any place to go. It's like, it's like meditation, you know, like you, you sit there and it's so boring. Like you don't think about nothing, you breathe, but then actually within that boring space within that space of nothingness will bring like this universe of oneness right and like i feel like as i get older i'm more able to appreciate the mundane into the everyday stuff and still finding the excitement in those things just like i think when i was young i always wanted to you know live in a big city and you know drive fancy cars and wear these fancy clothes and be where the excitement is and now as i'm older i'm not that old but like i'm older right like i find beauty in quieter places in smaller towns in nature i think that's really where you can really tune into yourself and i think the same thing with you know psychedelics like before i was I wanted to trip balls, you know, I wanted to take acid and go to, you know, these crazy places in a city or, you know, in in the deepest forest. But now I'm okay with just meditating in my room in a darkness with no music, with nothing, you know. And within that quiet space, I can hear so many things, you know, I can see so many things. But when you're in that quote unquote stereotypical hero's journey, it's like this fabricated thing that you're creating for yourself. But when you're emptying yourself from all these other things, then the universe comes to you and shows you what it is really about. And I think, you know, with everyday life, people look at it like it's so boring. But if you zoom out from it, just two steps back, you actually see, man, like you are doing a lot. This is actually the hero's journey. But it is hidden, you know, like nobody will recognize you for it. Nobody's going to make a BBC documentary of you paying off your student loans. (laughs) Right. But it is super heroic, man. I mean, like the things that you're doing, the things that you're sacrificing, you know, the time you're putting into the stuff that you're working on that nobody recognizes, like that's where, where the magic happens. I think the psychedelics, it's, it's a big part of it, right? Of course, like that. That's like when Luke goes to, you know, Yoda and learns the tricks. But then where the movie actually takes off is when Luke, you know, goes to fight, you know, Darth Vader and goes through all that other stuff that he doesn't want to go through. And that's really where where enlightenment happens is when you're facing adversity, when you're facing all these things that you don't like, like student loans or credit cards or you know, facing the capitalistic system that you have to maybe buy a house and get a fucking mortgage and these things that you don't, you don't really believe in. 
when you're when you're faced against those things and excelling at it and having an open mind about it and having this peace of mind about it, I think that's when, you know, the hero's journey really begins. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, does that yeah. Make no, I mean, you said, you said something really good there where you said like before you said like the universe then will present itself or open itself up to you, you know, because it's, it's, it's been there this whole time. But I think like for myself, I had this sort of this, there was a separation, you know, and that separation created, uh, you know, a little bit of like animosity or hostility or bitterness or something like that, or pitted me as a victim against the system. And, you know, in a lot of ways that is still true, but it's like the perception that you have, you know, taking on, as Jordan Peterson says, like taking on the burden of being on your shoulder and, you know, being like Sisyphus and like that rock, rolling that rock up the hill, only knowing that it's going to come down again. And it's like, well, what other, what other fight is there? You know, it's like better to take on this fight than to just check out completely, you know? Um, and yeah, I mean, like, just think about like, you know, with Star Wars, you mentioned like, you know, just imagine if like, Luke didn't go on the journey that he went on. And instead of, you know, in in, in the first one, he just was like, oh, I can redeem Darth Vader. I I know there's good in him. You'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Like he needed to, in order to see the situation with the, from, you know, with all of the angles and all of the, the curves and all the dimensions, he needed to go through the trials and the tribulations and the experience of the ups and the downs and the turmoil to gain that new perspective. And I, I feel like that for myself. It's like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the perspective that I have now uh, looking at the, the mundane things that I've been doing, right? Like I'm working a job right now. I'm working two jobs and I'm... I'm doing it, but I'm doing it with a different outlook instead of doing it with like, ah, shit, man, this fucking sucks. Like, this is bullshit. Like, you know, I'd rather be like tripping on shrooms and like, you know, talking to like aliens. Like, why do I have to be here? This is nonsense. (laughs) You know, this is just, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. This is bullshit. This isn't real. There's so much, there's so much more than this, or, you know, we're all getting screwed and, you know, there's a bigger picture here, whatever it is. It's like, okay, fine. That all might be true, but it's like, doing this, creating this like inertia by like putting one foot in front of the other and like going about the business of taking care of things that need to be taken care of it. The universe opens up, unfolds to you. And then if you're willing to like accept it in, then you, then you have, for me, I've had this new outlook where I look at these things as like, well, yeah, like this, you know, this is why I think like I'm starting to really understand a little bit more about Buddhism and and Zen and you know really listening to, um, uh, you know, like I used to listen to a lot of Alan Watts, but like listen more to his like Zen lectures and you know read a little bit more. Uh, I was just finished. I was started this book um, by this guy Ethan Nickturn, who's like a student of the Shambhala uh, Buddhism. Cho- yeah, it's a great, great book about uh, I forgot what there's a like, I forgot what the name of it is, but I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I and, think he um, was on Duncan's podcast before. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and so I'm starting to see that that point of view, and I understand it a little bit more now. I used to be, you know, like people like Thich Nhat Han and stuff, and you know, seeing God like Ramda, seeing God in drag, like everyone's God in drag. Like I used to hear those things, and I used to be like, all right, that's kind of cool, but. Still, I would still hold the same sort of outlook uh, at the world that I had then because I, I hadn't had the experiences and gone through what I had to go, to go through in order to like earn that perspective. I feel like and now I've earned it and now I actually am looking at it in a different way and it, and it, and it does make sense to me now, you know, and whereas I, I, you know, psychedelics will always be a part of my life. I think they're going to, they're a great part of life. And, but I think really like, the daily practices are really the key to living like a healthy, positive life and not being like a bitter victim, you know, and just, and just, and, and, and letting the universe like unfold into your life, you know? Yeah, it's a big part of it. And I feel like you're a lot more grounded than before, before you were more polarized, I guess, you know, like you were very extreme in, in, in one way or the other, like, 
like fuck the government or or whatever, you know. And and now I think you're more yeah. Well, I mean, accepting. Uh, of, no, I mean, like, I mean, I, fuck the government. Still that. Yeah, you're probably, still that. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably still that. But I mean, like, you're more accepting of what it is and yes, knowing that you know this is the reality of things and it doesn't matter if it's not going your way or if it is but just accepting how it is i think that's like one of the biggest things that people can do like it's just letting go of their preconception of how it should be and accepting how it is now it doesn't mean that you have to accept it fully like oh well you know they're putting psychic psychonauts in all in prison and i should accept it it's how it is and because that's reality like that's a part of it but it's not fully what it is it's like this paradoxical relationship that you have with reality where you accept it like yeah like that's who you are but also like this can be better but you don't go about it in this host- hostile way of changing it you know what i mean yeah I think, which i think you were kind of doing it before <laughs> totally, not yeah, hostile but yeah. like you had this resentment towards like reality where like no like this is not how it should be. Like you're a total like Anakin Skywalker before he turned into Vader, where he was holding right. a lot of resentment and anger towards reality. And now I think you have more of an acceptance and open mind and heart towards what it is. And you know, meanwhile, you're working towards like a better future for everybody and also to yourself. You recognize the, the wrongs, but you also, you know, realize, you know, this is okay as well. You know, do you know? Does, does that make any yeah, sense? Yeah, no, totally. I, I mean, I think that, like, like, you know, everybody's heard the phrase, like, you got to play the cards you're dealt. You know, yeah, everyone's heard that that phrase like a million yeah. times. Like, yeah, life's like a poker game. You got to play the the cards you're dealt. But it. it you could he- you could hear things that make so much sense and you logically you're like yeah I logically understand how that makes sense but really it's not until you experience it that you can really fully embody the change that you wish you know that you that you uh can extract out of those meanings you know out of those phrases like i can actually embody that and and make a change now from understanding that at like a deep core level um, because really that is the only thing that there is. There is only what is here and now. And that, and what you're saying is it's not to accept it and roll over, right? Like play the cards you're dealt. Okay, fine. If I get dealt a two and a four, that doesn't mean that I have to automatically fold, right? Like I could actually make a decision here to play the shit out of this hand. Maybe I'll bluff, maybe I'll raise a lot, whatever it is. But it's like, I, you, you, everybody has a choice to do whatever they can with whatever they're dealt. And, you know, I think also like just being grateful, like being grateful. So many times in the past, I've just had, I've forgotten, I've forgotten like the, the privileges that I've been bestowed, you know, like the, the seriously, the I white mean, male, yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, like, yeah. I mean, you know, like, I, I, I'm, I'm I mean, sure it's sort of true. Yeah, it's it, sort it of is true. sort of true. There, but there also, to that, yeah. I mean, it's just like, look, like, <clears throat> I'm born in America, and I'm born to uh, a well-off, like, middle, middle, middle class, well-off family in New York, and I've had access to all sorts of things. I've been to all sorts of places, like. You know, and then to to have the privilege to go to Peru and to do ayahuasca work and all these sorts of things, you know, think of the the it's 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 totally a privilege to be able to to do all these things. I'm not just saying that like these were just given to me yeah. or anything, but it's like I took I chose to do these things. So I'm not going to just let all that stuff like die with inside of me. You know, I'm gonna I, I feel like an. Uh, I feel grateful that I've had the opportunity to do these things. I feel grateful that I am alive every day and well, and I, I can do these things. And also like, you know, with that comes a sense of like, okay, let me, for, for, for what I believe in is I believe in, I, you know, I care for the, I care for like humanity. So it's like, let me try and pass on a little bit of what I've learned. And if it resonates with somebody, if it makes someone feel better, if someone can connect with it, well then great. Like I'm actually, I'm actually turning the needle like a centimeter in a, in a better direction. And like, that's all you can really do. Like there's, there's nothing that we can do 
to change the world tomorrow. It's just like, what can we do every day to make the world a little bit of a better place before we're not here anymore? And, and that's, that's, yeah. and, and make the world a better place, make your life a better place, make your relationships better. You know, cause at the end of the day, it's like, I think this also comes with like getting older. I'm 34 now. I just turned 34. And I think like with getting older, like just different things, like I have nephews and nieces now, you know, I have a, a girlfriend who we're talking about, like, you know, we're getting serious, more serious. And, you know, so it's like, well, what really matters in life? Because you can, you can, you can, you know, spend hours and hours on, on the internet all day, diving into all sorts of issues <laughs> and getting angry about every single little thing that yeah. Trump says or whatever it is. But really all the only thing that matters is like, do I have food? Do I have shelter? Am I loved? Do I have people? Do I have loving, caring relationships? Do I have good community? Do I have people that care about me? Do I care about other people? You know, those sorts of things. And it's like, all right, cool. If you have that at the end of the day, hey, life's pretty good. You know, it's like, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Well, I'm glad good. that you brought that up because a lot of people are lost in those things right now. And I can see it from my perspective. Like I have, you know, my Instagram account, a lot of followers on there. And I'll post something that's obviously a joke or a satire thing. And people would take it seriously and have crazy debates. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll have like these comments, man, that are just people debating about these issues. And with me, like I'm I'm playing God in that position because I'm just looking at it from the outside. Obviously, I created that mess, <laughs> but I didn't know it would turn into that thing. Um but a lot of people have these online debates or they submerge themselves into these worlds of social media. And uh, I really find it to be a problem in today's age. Yeah. Because more and more people are spending more time on social media than anything else. I mean, you live in New York. I'm sure I'm sure you see people on the subway. Um, you know, nobody talks to each. I mean, I mean, obviously, nobody talks to each other on the subway. That's you'd be crazy to talk to some other people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Without phones or whatever, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you have phones or not. However, like people don't, don't even pay attention to the street or the environment. Like somebody could walk in with a fucking gun or a bomb or whatever, and nobody would give a shit because everybody's looking at their phones. And people are tapped into these cyber worlds and they're not here and now, like you were talking about before. And people are emerge into these worlds that they created for themselves into these bubbles of social media or whatever and i think the more time you spend on social media the more human skills you'll lack in the real world because you're really living in this fictional world that you created for yourself like if you like a big titty chick on instagram uh, you know, you'll have big titty chicks pop up on your feed for the next three days <laughs> and you're living in this, you know, this bubble that you created for yourself. That's not really real. And you're having these conversations with other people that might not even be real. You know what I mean? And if you have a real conversation with a real human being about the same issue, like I, I guarantee you the result and the experience would be a little different. But now like since you're online and you're on Instagram, everything is polarized and everything is taken to the extreme. So, you know, people are having a hard time, I feel like, in their everyday life because they're spending more time in these cyber worlds that are not yielding the same kind of meaning that they would as if they were you know, shopping at a butcher's club or something or, you know, communicating with their neighbors or, you know, or, or just look at the stars or on bonfire or whatever the case might be that's in this world, in our reality. But instead, like they're spending all their time in this other dimension that is just feeding off of your attention, you know, is, is doing nothing but that. Like all it wants is your attention, is your eyeball on their screen so that they can, you know, sell whatever they can or they can do whatever they want or promote whatever agenda they, they, they would. And it's taking time away from your time in this real world. 
And I, I feel like that's a big problem. And, uh, you know, iPhone, they just came out with this new thing with screen time. Yeah. And I limited myself to just two hours a day on social media. <laughs> oh, good. And every fucking day I, I extend that time because you can extend it for like oh, okay. two minutes. And I, I find myself extending 15 minutes more, 15 minutes more. And I'm thinking like, what the hell am I doing, man? Like, and I'm not even that bad. You know what I mean? Because when I go on a subway, I just look at other people because sometimes I think that I'm living in this other simulation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're sometimes you feel like you're in a simulation. Yeah. But then when you're on your phone, that's like another simulation. Mm-hmm. So I'm, what I'm looking at is the, these people living in a simulation and also living in another simulation. A simulation that inside living, a simulation. Yeah. Exactly. So like it's, it's just too crazy. So, you know, like I'm sorry for going on this long rant, but no, I, I feel like it's a good point. nowadays like social media or just cell phones in general, it's just like totally like fucking us yeah. in the ass. I think we'll, and, uh, we'll, we'll come out of it. I think, you know, like with, yeah. with every new technology, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I remember this course that I took in college, it was like mass media communication course. And we were learning about uh, television. And actually, I, re- I re- read this book recently, not too long ago, by this guy, Neil Postman, called Amusing Ourselves to Death. And it was all about how television has taken over our culture and taken over the minds of people. And this this was a big deal. Like, in the, the, the like television s- sort of shaped, you know, kind of transformed humanity in the 80s, you know, kind of like, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, 80s and 90s being it's like prime real time. You know, I, I don't know if this is a thing anymore, but it was in the 90s when it was like the Homer Simpson couch potato guy. You know, I think it was something like the average American watched uh, like 50 hours of television a week or something like that. And um, I don't know if you see that anymore because there's you, you know, cause now it's like social media, YouTube, Netflix, YouTube, yeah. these sorts of things, but still it's like wherever, wherever there's entertainment to be had, people will venture to that. You know why? Because a lot of us are living our lives, uh, in pain, you know, in varying degrees of pain and we want to escape from that pain. And, you know, I, I do it myself, you know, like I, I, after maybe a long day of work, instead of coming home and and reading, you know, uh, the this new Carl Jung book that I have, which you know, it's like after a long day of That's work, do I want to dive into this like <laughs> difficult, you know, uh, yeah. book here, so or do I want to check out and watch Suicide Squad? On you know, like <laughs> maybe I just want to go for some like cheap, mindless entertainment, right? It's like why not? Um, yeah, but it's hard to get into your own book even without work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. so, you know, wherever there's entertainment to be had, people are going to gravitate towards that. Uh, and then with that being said, when the networks, uh, you know, in this case, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, these kinds of places, know that, you know, they, they know how to tailor their system to keep you on there and to keep you hooked on there. And they, you know, have engineers and psycho, uh, you know, psychologists, behavioral psychologists and people working to try and, you know, tweak the platforms in order to keep people on the platform as much as possible. Because if they keep people's eyes on the platform, they can then attract more advertisers and you know, Facebook, I think, is uh, what you know one of the biggest advertising platforms on the planet. And uh, you know, so and then the advertisers are happy, companies are happy because they get to put their products in front of people, and they get to tailor the you know who gets to see what. And and in a way, like people start to live in these in these like little reality bubbles in their own sort of world. And the and the joy that comes out of that is that you can kind of make like. Everybody wants to be a hero. Everybody wants to live an exciting life. So if you're on social media and if you have, you know, accounts where you post a lot or you comment a lot or maybe you just watch a lot, whatever it is, you're able to dive into your own world, zone out and become the hero of your show, the star of your show. And uh, and that's what people really want. You know, that's that's what people really want. And um, and, and it's 
you know, but it's, it's not real. That's the pro. And that's why we feel yeah. bad. That's why it's like, it's junk food. You know, it's like uh, McDonald's commercial. It might, you know, if you're hungry, you might see that and be like, Oh wow, this looks delicious. This looks so good. And maybe it, maybe it is, maybe it's tasty when you put it in your mouth, but you know, you're not going to, you know, it's not good for you. You know, it's not high quality food and you know, you're not going to feel like really great afterwards. Um, and that's, that's the, the thing, right? That's it's the like same thing kids, that social like media they, does. They post a lot and they try to attract followers. And if they get a lot of likes, then they feel happy that day, maybe for just, you know, a few hours because they feel like they're loved. They feel like they have more friends, but it's not real. Right. And I think that's the kind of the dangers of social media. It's like they give you this false perception of, oh, wow, like I have more friends or people love me because I have like, I don't know, 100 likes or whatever. But then like that's not real man <laughs> like right that's that's what they want you to feel like but that's not real so well yeah the and you know we're, we're i like old to enough call to, to know that right but then yeah. like there are kids out there that don't right like they actually think oh wow like this is you know i'm popular like i made the popular page man like i'm the shit you know i'm fucking lit whatever yeah. you know <laughs> so yeah that's kind of the the uh, what worries me is like, you know, like people are actually thinking their life on social media is reality when it's not. Yeah. And, and the, the problem is, and this happens with every, every generation, it, ta it takes a generation for an idea to catch on or for a normal right. thing to, to take place. And now th th this, in this age that we're in now, this is what you're describing is just normal to like 18 year old kids or whatever. It's, it's just normal. This is just the normal way of uh, that things are because they've grown into that. So they don't know any other way. Um, so, but the problem is that, and this happens with every generation too. It's like we, we, as, this, as we grow as a human civilization, we're moving less and less away from what's really real uh, you know, wa walking barefoot on the earth, connecting with the ground, you know, breathing in the air, you know, taking time to enjoy uh, the, your surrounding environment that is alive, the plant nature and the animals and, and things like that, you know, and focusing on the things that, that really matter, the things that are right in front of you, the people that are right in front of you, the relationships that you have and the relationship that you have with yourself, you know, and there's so much of this is being pushed on the exterior rather than on the interior. And, uh, and what happens is it's like we, as we move further and further away from like sort of our primordial, you know, tribal origins, we offer up substitutes for the real thing, uh, you know, like consolation prizes, so to speak. Like, okay, well, you can't, you can't really have a hundred friends who really love you and care about you, but how about the next best thing? What if we can give you a hundred people that you've never heard of or don't even know, or maybe you don't even know are real, that will symbolically show you a little red heart that symbolizes love for you? Will you take that? And it's like, yeah, okay, I'll take that. But at the end of the day, it's not real, so it doesn't feel good. You get nothing out of it. It's empty calories. It's junk food. Um, and, you know, the problem is that it's like people are growing up just with that, so they don't know what that real connection is. They don't know what that true, raw, real juice of life spirit is. Um, and it's sad. It's, it is definitely sad. But I, I feel like we we adapt, we evolve, and we do that by making mistakes and going down roads. So I feel like we will work our way out of it. It's probably just gonna it'll just reach like a you know, it'll reach a point where it gets like really, really bad and then something will happen where we'll be able to break out of it, you know. And it's also a new technology too. Whenever a new technology comes on the scene, People, you know, I mean, we're all just like a bunch of babies. We just want shiny, new, cool things. So everybody goes and moves towards that thing. And it's like, oh, yeah. But then eventually it loses its luster, you know, and then the, and until the new thing comes along. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that uh, there's this guy, Jaron Lanier. Uh, I posted on my Facebook recently. He was talking about, like, he has a book called 10 Reasons Why You Should Delete Your Social Media. Uh, and he's known as the father of virtual reality. He like invented virtual reality, I guess. His name's Jaron Lanier. 
He's written a couple so books. So what's the reason? <laughs> uh, I haven't read his books yet. I I got one of them. I it's called The Dawn of a New Everything. Guy's a brilliant guy. Right. Um, Damn, and, he looks like a he has dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He he looks he looks like. Uh, the comic book guy from the Simpsons went to Burning Man. But like, if you could, if you could get past that, like he makes some really, really good points. And you know, he, he, yeah. and there's, there's a, a bunch of other people. There's this guy, Tristan Harris, who, uh, who has a company called time well spent. I think he was the lead engineer, lead developer on Gmail's inbox uh, app. Right. And he left because he was like, you know, he was realizing that all they were doing is trying to get, how can they hook people? How can they get people? How can they hook people? That's like what Google was concerned with. And he's like, I don't want this. So he started a company called Time Well Spent that actually uh, teaches people how you can reorganize your iPhone so you can like move certain apps away or, you know, make it so when you search for an app, it, it doesn't appear. You actually have to go and find it um, if you want to use it, you know, things like that, or just deleting maybe de like I've, I've deleted Facebook off my phone. So anytime I want to yeah. look at Facebook, I just have to go on a desktop, you know? Um, but it's just like these little things are emerging now because people recognize like, holy shit, I'm not feeling good. You know, I remember just this last point and then I'll, I'll finish up, but it's just, I remember this dark period in my life where I literally didn't leave my apartment. I mean, I left my apartment, but I, I mainly didn't leave my apartment for most days for like two, three months in the winter time in New York. I got most of my meals delivered by seamless, just like online, go online, order a meal comes in. I didn't do any, everything I did was online. You know, I did, was still doing the podcast and everything, but I didn't leave my apartment. I got all my meals delivered. I wasn't going out. I wasn't really hooking up with any girls. I was just watching porn like a, like a maniac nonstop. So I was getting all of my like basic needs met. Like I was, I was, I was, uh, you know, satisfying myself, uh, ple pleasuring myself, you know, I was getting all of my basic human needs met, but they're all coming in this substitute fake way, substitute for the real thing way. This like, Hey, can't believe it's not butter way. You know, it's like, and it, and it, and it left me feeling so empty and so depressed and so miserable inside. And I think a lot of people do feel like that yet their, their answer to that is let's search for the, the newest, bestest, biggest, shiniest, more thing to grab my attention rather than what we should be doing is taking a break, turning it off, shutting it, shutting it down, meditating, focusing, breathing, you know, experimenting with mind altering substances and things like that. Yeah. So reading the table of contents for that book and I'll go through the 10 reasons. And of course, like he goes into it really deeply in the book. But the first one is you're losing your free will. Second one is quitting social media is the most finely targeted way to resist the insanity of our times. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The third one is social media is making you into an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth one is social media is understanding or it's undermining truth. The fifth one is social media is making what you say meaningless. Next one is social media is destroying your capacity for empathy. Social media is making you unhappy. Social media doesn't want you to have an econ economic dignity. Social media is making politics impossible. And the last one is social media hates your soul. Wow. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that, that <laughs> really might be worth checking down. out, you know. So I'm I'm definitely gonna get yeah. around to to reading that. Um, but uh, yeah, do you want to maybe like pick out a couple of those? Maybe we can go over like three of them yeah, and just kind sure, of man. give our take on what we think. Pick pick one out that you yeah. think is interesting. Well, um, I think the free will one is interesting because, like I was talking about earlier, like people, like I find it for myself at least. Whenever I'm bored or free, like I go to the phone and I check Instagram, especially for me, <laughs> like I have, I have a few Instagram accounts, right? <laughs> so like I have my own one, uh, the podcast and, uh, obviously the, for the podcast, that one has become something else. It's like this meme page. I'm almost like reaching 50,000 followers, which is like, you know, fucking crazy for me. Um, but the thing is, like, I never show my face on there. I never uh, talk about my own shit. 
I just post memes, which are it's like I'm I, I feel like I'm a good comedy writer, but I'm not a good comedian. You know what I mean? Like I can write jokes, I can write memes, and I can make it funny, insightful, and things like that. And I have a talent for that, so I kind of it's it's more a fun thing for me. You know, like I'm off work and I, I want something to to get my creative juices out of and that's where I go to you know like I just make these memes and I, I make myself laugh and I post it and I, I don't really care about what other people think you know I just it's just for me like I'm not trying to fucking get likes or whatever like but people if people like it then great if people don't like it fine but I make these things about like what I really feel not what I really feel like but to a certain extent you know there are some levels of truth to how I feel in the memes, but for the most part, it's comedy, it's satirical, it's supposed to, you know, trigger some people to think about certain subjects or to think deeper about their their own lives or to laugh. And with social media, a lot of people are not they're when when they see something that triggers them, even though they might be a good person in their daily life, all of a sudden they turn into this monster <laughs> mm-hmm. and and they write things that they don't mean and they attack people, they attack ideas, they 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 just turn into somebody else, like Venom, you know? Mm-hmm. And not only that aspect, but also like with social media, once you post something, you have this natural tendency to check like how much people liked it. Especially for me, it's like, you know, I post a meme and I can gauge how people like it or how people find it funny by the likes and the comments and stuff like that. And whenever I have free time, I, I look at the Instagram and like I open it up and like, oh, wow, OK, I got a thousand likes. Must be a good, good meme. And I, I try to gauge my my material towards that direction, because with good feedback, that means it did well. That means I got more engagement. That means I got more views, blah, blah, blah. And is this like carrot and stick thing where like, you know, like social media is putting this fake carrot in front of you and you're constantly chasing it. But it's not social media that's doing it. It's you, you're doing it. You know what I mean? Like you're the content creator, like social media, Instagram, like they're put, providing a platform for you, but you're actually the person that's doing it. So like we're doing it to ourselves <laughs> yeah. on many, many different levels, you know, on a content creation level, and also on the participation level where like, oh, wow, like I feel like I have to comment on this, you know. Oh, my God, Kanye West is wearing a MAGA hat <laughs> and he's shaking Trump's hand. I got to say something, you know. It's like, no, like you're not doing nothing. Like if you are against that and you all you're doing <laughs> is is saying shit on social media, you're doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's like this fake thing that we feel like we're doing something but we're doing actually nothing and you're being forced into this not forced but like you're engaging yourself you're participating yourself you're volunteering yourself into the system where you're losing your free will and i feel like his argument argument number one you're losing your free will that's probably the most important one because yeah. like it is this addiction now like this addiction where if you if you don't check your instagram in more than you know, three, four hours or Facebook or whatever, there's an itch, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, point it's where, we've really been conditioned to respond yeah. to our phones in the same way that we've been conditioned to respond to, you know, Hey, it's breakfast time. It's lunchtime. It's dinner time yes, or whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's become like that much of a critical part of everybody's lives. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And now like I should delete it. My Facebook, like I deactivated my account, I deleted the app on my phone because Facebook got to this point where it's just like political arguments that I don't give a fuck about, you know, yeah. like I don't, I care about those arguments, but I don't care about your opinion. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't care. So like I deleted it and, uh, with Instagram it's still fun for me. So I keep it around, yeah. but obviously the more I do it, like the less happy I get. So lately I've been doing less Instagram. I've been meditating more. I've been reading more. And the thing I tell myself is like, why would I fucking read your stupid comment? 
or your meme or whatever. When I can read so, read something that was written by somebody great like Carl Jung. Yeah. But obviously yeah. that's easier said than done because easier like said than done. Yeah. <laughs> social media, it's like this low hanging fruit. You can get a laugh. You can, you know, get angry, get emotional. I feel love even sometimes on social media. Well, and that's a, Young, that's a like, good point. God damn, you have to think, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, you think about it when you, you're, 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 you're sitting there, it's nighttime, you're, you know, maybe a couple hours. You want to relax. You yeah. Know? A couple hours before you're going to bed or something like that. You look over, you see on your bookshelf, tons of books that you have that you haven't read, right? And you can crack any of them open and you could start getting, getting to work on any of them and enjoy it. And a lot of times what happens is when I do that, I go, holy shit, like, I'm really glad I did this because this was good. I really enjoyed this. But nine times out of 10, what I do instead is I will go to the phone and I'll go to the phone and I'll go on Instagram and I'll scroll, I'll scroll through things that I don't even care about. And I'm looking at, but it's got me. It's got me because I've been conditioned to do that. I'm conditioned to have my phone next to my bed. I'm conditioned to rely on my phone to set my alarm in the morning. And I'm, and I've just been, I've just been doing, you know, I've just been reaching for the phone for so long. And then going on Instagram, you have, it's so, it's so colorful. It's so creative. There's so, there's moving images, there's pictures, there's hot there's women, there's, there's vacation, text, there's yeah. jokes, there's vacations, there's, there's experience porn, you know, living vicariously through somebody else's life, looking at their pictures, looking at their podcasts, looking at their, you know, YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Like, oh, that's, this is interesting. Oh, I like how they did this. Oh, that's really fat, you know, and it's just, you, you can go on and if you're a curious person, which a lot of people seem to be, you can go on an endless journey. But what happens a lot of the times is you do wind up walking away feeling a little bad about it because inevitably what human beings do is they compare themselves to other people. They measure up their life compared to somebody else's that they're, oh, I should be, I should be hiking, you know, in the Grand Canyon. I should be traveling, living out of a van. I should be, you know, posting more about, (laughs) I should be posting more memes. I should be, you know, podcasting more. I should be doing, you know, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And then, you know, that leads into this, like this spiral of like, you know, and just, I guess getting back to, I sort of went a little off off course there, but, you know, getting back to like the free will thing is, yeah, it's like when you go on that platform, it it does become like a drug. And with any drug, you know, and I've done them all, you know, and I've done drugs that like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, I used to, I used to yeah. do like a lot of cocaine and smoke cigarettes. And it's like, you know, there's this urge to go and do that thing, even though you kind of know that like, you probably shouldn't do that thing. And you know, you might yeah, not necessarily really feel need. good, but you're compelled to do it because you need that you need that hit and you need, you need that hit, that dopamine hit, you know, and your brain is like, come on, we're like, why, you know, let's not look at this book, this boring page with this old guy. Let's go in this never ending sea of entertainment and fantasy land and get that dopamine hit and just keep, you know, getting that hit. And, uh, and man, yeah, it, it's, 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 you know, if you go to sleep with your phone on your nightstand next to your bed, it's like, it's like a, a cocaine addict going to sleep with a, with a eight ball, uh, next to the bed. You know, it's the same, it really is like the same thing. Yeah. And unfortunately people don't really see it that way. They're like, oh, you can't really get addicted to social media. Oh, you can't really get addicted to porn. Oh, you can't really get addicted to TV. It's like, no, you can actually, you know, addictions come in all different forms. If you're doing something habitually and you're doing it sort of blindly, and you're just, you know, going through the motions and you're doing it and you're doing it because you feel compelled to do it. And you don't even, you know, that you're not even really fully, you know, it's, you know, that it's like not, not really fully fulfilling you. You, you're, you got a problem. Like you're addicted. It's, it's, you gotta, you gotta take a break, you know, chill out. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there is something good from that. Um, I think you were talking about earlier, like saying, oh, I need to go on these hikes or I need to be as good as this guy. And I think sometimes you do get inspirations from, you know, seeing those videos or pictures, just like I think in the athletic world, like if you're in jujitsu or whatever, you see like a new technique on Instagram and it, and you say, oh, wow, like I should try this. And that person is like submitting that guy. And like, 
you're thinking, I got to up my game. I got to catch up to this people because like all you're seeing is really the elites, you know, on the videos. Like the only people that are posting those videos are the people that are super good at what they do because they're proud of their elite work that they're put in and they're showing it off to the world. And when you're seeing that, you're surrounded by that, you can up your game, um, you know, really tremendously because you're all of a sudden you're, your eyes are open to these new possibilities that that you weren't uh, known to before, especially like if you live in a small town or whatever, and you're exposed to all these new and elite people that are in the field, you can actually, you know, get inspiration and also up your game and learn new things from social media. So I think there is a good side to that. Sure. Because like I've definitely yeah. taken a lot of notes from, you know, like doing handstands and like calisthenics and shit like that from like looking at these videos like oh my god like wow like this is crazy yeah or, like don't get me wrong thinking, i'm like yeah i'm not like right like yeah yeah no i'm yeah. just saying like i'm and not like, i'm not like i'm not like ted kaczynski and like saying yeah, like yeah, yeah. we need yeah. to blow up social media <laughs> i'm not saying it's all bad but i think for the majority of people it winds up working out that way right i think what you're talking about yeah. is is really important because it's like if you're able to have gained a certain kind of outlook about what you're doing and awareness to what you're doing. And then when you open your social media account, you open it with intention and purpose and you're, you're aware, then that's fine because you're like, oh, okay, cool. I know what I'm doing. I know the potential perils and dangers that I could slip into. I could be on here for two hours scrolling and then get depressed. Yeah. Or it's like, hey, I'm just going to follow the accounts that I like, the people that inspire me. Every day I'm going to check. I'm going to get a couple quick tips. I'm going to get some useful information. And cool, I'm going to feel good about it. Going in with an intention, well, going like in with a way. purpose, yeah, and going in with a sense of awareness, <laughs> you know, and and look, and this all connects. This all connects back to psychedelics, right? Because I, I really do truly believe that because psychedelics are not a mainstream, integrated part of what it means to be a human being in the world that we live in today, we're we're doing a disservice to people. People aren't able to really crack open their minds because I, d I definitely feel like psych we do need psychedelics to help people, especially in today's day and age, crack open their minds. And then, you know, after your mind has been cracked open a good amount, then you can, you know, transform that into more integrating into daily practices and meditation, things like that. I do think that's a good roadmap, but it's like, it's almost like there's so much, there's such an onslaught right now of social media and political stuff and this thing and that thing. It's like we can't keep up with all the information, all the curiosity, all the entertainment, and it, and we're drowning in it. And we need something to just crack people open a little bit so you can have a, a little bit of awareness. And then when you when you have that awareness, then that leads to healthier practices. It leads to healing. It leads to healthier practices. I mean, it can, and and if and if you can gain a, a sort of psychedelic mindedness or a level of awareness to your life, then everything slows down. You can become more grounded, and then your free will comes back to you. And now the choice is in everybody's hands to say, what do we want to prioritize? Where do we want to put our focus on? Because right now, you look at I look at the mass of the masses of people and what and how they're behaving. And a lot of the times it's like rats in a maze, you know, it's like, it's like we're in a big laboratory experiment, you know, it's like people are mindlessly just going about doing things. They don't even realize what they're doing. So yeah, I think, it, I think real. it all connects. I think, I mean, the internet and, and, and social media is, is a very psychedelic concept anyway. I mean, it's this, it's this crazy thing that we're able to do that I could just speak into this like foam stick. And then there's a wire that like, goes into this box and I'm able to talk to my Asian friend in Hong Kong, you know, it's like, what? Like, this is, this is trippy, man. But, um, yeah, just, just gaining a certain level of awareness. I really think that, that, that it's all connected, right? Like we can't, we can't just look at it as being an isolated incident. You know, it doesn't, it's not like social media is a problem in a vacuum. It's like social, it's not just social media. That's a problem. It's like human beings, it's like we created social media, we use yeah. social media, right? Like you said that before, right? Yeah, it's us doing us doing it to us. And 
I think we have also the power to stop it. But I mean, we need to or just make it better. You know, that's the ultimate thing. Yeah, that's the. I mean, I think I think that's the ultimate thing. It's like I think there's always going to be something that you can be addicted to. Doesn't matter if social media is gone tomorrow. Like there's, we'll find something new. Right? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. And there's, yeah, and there's always going to be people that are going to be like that. And you have to instead of blaming social media, you have to you know take responsibility of right. like, okay, maybe this is fucking me. That's fucking it up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've been reading this book. I think Jock and Willink. Um, extreme like ownership. Extreme ownership. Okay. And like he, he's telling people like, yeah, you got to take, you know, full responsibility of your actions. And I was thinking, man, like that's actually like a really, really fucking good advice because everybody these days like to blame other people for your own problems. So, so easy to do that. It doesn't matter if it's politics yeah. or you know, social media or like we need, we like to do like we blame, you know, governments or the, the system. And there's a lot of things that are worth to blame, worthy to blame. Like, don't get me wrong. Right. However, like who, who are those people? Those people are us. And yeah. if you want to do something about it, then be responsible and, you know, make a difference and vote or, you know, be a civil servant or whatever, you know? And it's, so we have to do that to ourselves. Like we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, hey, maybe it's you. It's not social media or it's not cocaine. It's not, <laughs> you know, whatever the case might be. So you have to be the change, like literally. Yeah, so, no, that's that's another it, big that's another big problem, right? It's like nobody wants to think that it's them. Like, you know, yeah. I, I pay attention, like I try and pay attention a lot when people are complaining because a lot of times for whatever reason, people feel like comfortable complaining around me. So they'll just be like, Oh, you know, this, that, and I just, <laughs> I just kind of listen, but it always revolves around like, well, these other people are dumb, but not me, you know? And, and it's like, yeah. they did all these things wrong, but not me. You know, it's like, well, I think, you know, I'm, uh, I'm glad that there's a law that says that you, you know, get in trouble for drinking while driving, but you know what? I actually drive pretty good when I'm drunk. So, you know, this applies to everyone but me, right? Like everybody has this yeah. bias where I've they're like, everything things, yeah. is, everything, everything applies to everybody else. But like, you know what? I'm actually kind of good at this thing. Like ah, I could kind of get away with this. And everybody, yeah, you're not an exception, dummy. But but <laughs> it's just natural. It's just natural that everybody yeah, thinks yeah. that way. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's things that I think like that. Like I definitely do. You know, I I definitely right. definitely have like things where I'm like, you know, oh, this is you know, it should be like this or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but I can do this. It's fine. You know, it's like. Ah, uh, you know, maybe well, I mean, psychedelics, the same thing. Like, oh, my God, I met the God of, you know, whatever. Like, I'm the only person in history to meet this God. Yeah. And, you know, you go on some some Reddit subreddit on psychedelics and turns out a million people had the same experience. Like, no, you're not that special. You know these I mean? are the these are the stories that we want to tell. And it's like I think we live in we live in a really interesting time right now where you know, I think back in tribal societies when people sat around, you know, fires and told stories in this in this sort of oral tradition that uh, that was a large part of our our prehistory. Um, you know, th the stories all th this is where these these myths came from and religions came from and all these things. And now everybody has the capacity to create their own story. And I think a lot of it boils down to these stories that we tell ourselves, how, where we cast ourselves, what role we cast ourselves in. And, you know, are, are we ca like some people cast themselves as the victim, right? It's like everything I yeah. do, like, you know, this person fucked me, this other person, like I got fired because this person was talking shit behind my back and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you just look at this person's life and everything in their life goes that way, right? It's like everything they're, they've cast themselves as this poor little old victim and the whole na their whole narrative goes that way. And it's just easy to do that nowadays. There's so many outlets, right? I mean, you could have a blog, you could have a podcast, you could have an Instagram account, a Facebook, you can go on Facebook and just start typing and, you know, whatever it is, people have the capacity to shape and build the stories that they want to tell. 
Um, you know, but I think really if we brought some awareness to it, we could realize like, holy shit, we could actually choose, we could actually choose like what, what we want to tell. Like we could choose how we want to make it, you know, um, because we, we can, right? Like we totally can. We don't have to rely on uh, all these other like entities that are like promising us these utopian futures. Oh, Facebook, we're going to connect the world and make the world a better place. Like Google, don't be evil. Like, you know, government, yeah, we're doing stuff, you know, whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. Like we're all, we're actually all like pretty connected. I think it's, I think it's really like our generation and the generation coming up that's going to realize this, that's going to realize like, oh, like, you know, it is kind of a burden too to realize. It's a burden to realize like, oh shit, like we have all the power. Like, fuck, that's like, that's crazy. Like we, it, all the choice well, comes the down most, to us. Like, like. Yeah, it, that's it, like the, the most burdensome responsibility ever. Right, but if everybody <laughs> you know I mean? just like, does it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think people are lazy when yeah. they have the victim mentality. It's like, oh, it, it's not... It's not me, it's them. And you're not taking the responsibility that that you're supposed to take. And when you do that, actually, it takes a lot of work because now all of a sudden you have so many things that you're responsible for and you can make better or worse and everything is up to you. But when you you know just say, oh, it's, it's other people, it's not me. And you might have a point sometimes, you know, you might. But you can also be better. And that's the thing that, I try to remember when unfortunate things happen to me. It's like, okay, well, you know, a lot of a lot of things in this situation are out of my control, and and you know, there's a lot of outside factors that came into play. But there's also many things that I can do better. You know, like I could have done this better. I could have done that better. And that's a really big learning experience when that happens. Like when something unfortunate happens, and you know, you could have done better you know, next time you definitely will remember that. So uh, that's just taking ownership of of what is happening around you. And when you do that, you actually have more control over your life. And yeah. you, you can actually live a happier life as well, I feel like. I think, honestly, I think the more responsibility that you take on to your life, obviously there's like a point of diminishing returns, but um, the more happy and the more meaning you'll find in your life. That's what it's I really so, like. It's so strange. Cause I used to feel like the opposite. Like I used to feel like, man, this is fucking bullshit. Like I don't want to fucking do anything. I just want to fucking lay around, do whatever the fuck I want. I don't want to like march the beat of anybody else's drum. Like I just want to do whatever I want, whenever I want. And you know, like I feel like things have started to shift and align a little bit more for me. Once I started doing the things that that I didn't really want to do, but I but I know that I have to do, and it's this kind of weird thing where st st stuff starts opening up, you know, and and little it's moments, a paradoxical situation. Yeah, like little moments start appearing, and you know, it's it's weird. It's like you find these little. You find these little like nooks or these little spaces in between where you get these joyous moments or you get this, I don't know, sometimes just like waking up in the morning sometimes and just looking out at the morning uh, day and I'm like, oh, wow, like I, I can't believe I actually feel like upbeat and positive and ready to start the day. This is a good feeling even though I'm going to work and I might not necessarily want to go and you know all this stuff, but when you go, you you interact with people, you know, you talk with people, you mention like, oh yeah, I have a podcast, I gotta talk about psychedelics or like self-improvement or whatever. Oh, and then like that person's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Maybe they won't listen, maybe they will. But it's like pushing yourself into the world and then the world, yeah. the world like responds like to how you push into it. And then things that you've never expected to open up, open up. And and it's not things, it's like it's like perspectives or outlooks or feelings or something like that, you know? Yeah. I hear that drilling. Well, I guess that's I like start, good. Well, yeah, that, it's like some knocking. Well, I guess that's a good time for us to wrap it up. Um <laughs> Hey man, this I was a really good off, yeah, conversation yeah. though. I, I feel like um it's been a while since I've I think spoken with you. This is the you. most optimistic 
conversation we've ever had before. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, it's it's so it it flows so much like so easily. I hope uh, the li- listeners feel the same way. Uh, it's been a while since I've spoken with you. I could talk to you for another three hours. We're gonna have to do another one soon. Yeah, for sure, man. So let's um yeah let's continue to sit or yeah let's let's talk later <laughs> and uh let's wrap it up here but uh thanks for listening to us and thanks for the universe for the knocking to happen at the very end of the podcast and uh if you want to find mike you can, you're on mikebrank.com right yeah it's mikebrank.com b-r-a-n-c uh you can also just find my podcast mike Adelic on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, all those good places. And uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks. Yeah. And I'm on psychedelicmilk.com, Psychedelic Milk Podcast, Psychedelic Milk on Instagram. Holla at your boy. Until next time, bye-bye. Peace. Peace.